Hey everybody, Dave Clark, AK, The Pattern Guy, back in the shop again today. We're going to make the core box for Keith Rucker's job today. All right, show you how to do that. We made the pattern, we've got the core print all out. So next step is making the core box. And uh, what we're gonna do is, like I said, when you look at drawings at first, they kind of look like, uh, you know, this was a basic pattern. You remember, it's the pattern we got going, right? So this one, the shape of the, the casting is more in the core box than the pattern okay and, and it's funny because a lot of times um i remember doing a job with my foreman joe um in her i think it was called the strainer housing or something it's literally just a two and a half foot square box and it literally had 144 cores in that thing it was unbelievable um i do have a job i gotta get cast We'll take you down to the foundry and we'll cast that. It's going to be a bronze casting. Um, I believe it's a brake valve for a steam locomotive. Okay, so the way I had that is uh, it's just like a dome with the pipe coming out. And the only way to mold it, we had to put a core underneath the, the pipe coming out, right, to pick that up. So, yeah, we'll, we'll show it to you. That's, that's pretty cool. So, that's basically what we had to do here. Remember, so we had this undercut. All right, so. The top view of this job, basically, um, I somehow lost all my colored markers. It'd be nice if I had the different colors. I don't right now, so I'll get some of those. Um, another thing too, real quick, off topic a little bit. Uh, some people are saying it's a good idea for me to get a second camera so I can get some uh, close-up shots in that. Got a second camera coming on the way. Hopefully, uh, next video we'll use two cameras. All right, see how that goes. So anyhow, top view down, okay? So here's my core print outside, okay? So that's this one right here, okay? We got the, got the key there and everything, okay? All right, so this line here, that's the pattern line. We got the hole in it, okay? This side, so this dotted line here in drawing terms, it's called the hidden line, okay? That's kind of the inside of the casting, all right? So that's actually would be the, these lines here, okay? So what we got to do with this is um, we got to come up with this shape in here. So all it is, basically, we're going to make a box. Um, same thing here, I was saying uh, the other day, you get this job, there's different ways to make it. Another thing, real quick, to, I keep on going off on tangents here. Another thing in determining how to build a pattern for casting. Okay, so the foundry is a big consideration, okay, sometimes it's lumber, you know, what, what kind of lumber, uh, your availability of certain lumber. Uh, the expense of if I got to do it your thing, do I got to do it this way, that way. So one of the other things you got to determine, and it's it's easier for me because I have machine experience. Okay, I did a lot of a lot of time on machines and that. So um, another thing you got to determine also is the machine ability of the casting when it's done. Okay, so this particular job, you know, I had somebody say that you know I could have probably done this a different way could have you know i was thinking maybe you know we could have like split it down this way but we wouldn't have been able to because this would have been an undercut in the pattern all right the other reason if we would have done it that way too if we would have flipped this off basically we would have had draft you know it would have went like this parting line draft the hole would have been through, instead of making this rectangular core box, we would have made it cylindrical. You know, the core prints would have come out here. You know, we could have made a cylindrical core box. The only problem with that is, you know, besides this cutout here too, is he wouldn't have a flat surface. He'd have to put, you know, this surface would be this surface here. And it, it, it wouldn't be flat for him to put on his machine, too, okay? So that's, you know, and doing it the way we're going to do it, 
this surface right here is going to be flat. You know, Keith is going to be able to put that down on his machine and he's going to have a machine point. You can do it. If you had the draft, you could put some shims underneath, whatever, but it's, it's just more of a pain for him, right? So this is the way I figured out how to do it, uh, make this core box. So the way we make this core box is we know our outside shape of the core print is what we made it, right? I just figured I'd put an inch around and it, it varies, but, you know, basically I have an inch all the way around. So that's this right here. All right, that's your inch. All right, this is going to be the pattern. All right, so basically what we have to do is we have to make this end cut right here, okay? So the depth of my core, it, we you know, we had to make that specific because on the drawing, I believe that was that cut. It's two inches, right? So two inches, but we had to subtract eighth of an inch for finish. So this is seven eighths on each side, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two boxes, okay? We're gonna make two dump boxes and they're gonna be seven eighths of an inch deep, all right? So all it's gonna be is a frame. We're gonna make a frame out here, okay? And then piece, gonna come in here, a piece here, and then side pieces, okay? So basically the outside of the box, what we'll do is, um, another thing, remember I told you, and this is things where, like I said, I just do this stuff off the top of my head and that, um, we got a bigger piece of wood, and I said, you know, we really should get the wood the weight, the size it is, for the pattern, I said I'll use the wood down the road for something else. Dummy me, okay, good thing we do have extra pieces of wood. So what, you know, we got this piece and we got this piece, guess what these are gonna be, right? Those are seven eighths of an inch thick. Those are gonna be the sides of the core box, all right? So we're gonna make some strips we only need to do inch wide would be good enough for this. Like I said, we're only gonna do two off, okay? And it's pine. Yeah, I, I really would like to usually, uh, especially the core box sides, we do them out of mahogany because uh, they'll usually, corp shops, what are the patterns? Foundries in the core rooms. When they make the cores, they usually have steel bars or whatever they strike off the tops of the core or make it flat so that wears all right and a piece of pine it's not gonna last it'll, it'll last 100 cores maybe maybe 200 cores something like that but we're only doing two so we're gonna do it out of pine we're doing it out of the same piece that we use all right that way it's already the thickness same thickness what we'll probably do though is i, I do want to make it a little bit thinner so i might set it up on the drill press, we'll take like a little tiny skim cut off, you know, a few thousands, maybe a little bit thinner, okay? So we want a little bit of clearance, all right? So we're gonna want a little bit of clearance on the sides also, all right? So we're gonna make it a little bit smaller than the core print that we have here, all right? Then after that, you got the outside that's gonna fit into the mold, all right? These core prints are gonna make an imprint in the mold all right, so the core's got to set in there, okay? So from there, the biggest part is this dotted line configuration right here, okay? So what we'll do with that is another 7 eighths piece, and all we got to do is make that configuration and put it inside that box, okay? That, that's all this. So we're basically going to have the core is going to be a frame. Now, when you're looking, you're thinking, well, this pattern, okay, when we make this mold, there's going to be a piece of sand that's going to protrude down, and, and actually it's going to be a cope half, drag half. They're going to kiss together in the mold, okay? Well, I'm going to have a core in there. That's going to get in the way of the core, right? No, it's not, because basically what it does is when we put this configuration in here, 
and it's going to create a hole in the core, all right, where that's going to sit, and that's going to fill with metal. So this chunk right in here will be this right here, okay? So it's kind of hard to explain, like I said, and then, you know, hopefully, like I said, when I get another camera going, go do a little bit more close-up shots and that, and it, think things will start, like, gelling. Um, it, it, it's going to take a while, especially... Kind of like the oscillating spindle sander, unless you can see it, you know, it, it's hard to do it over the camera, okay? So a lot of stuff's going to be hard over the camera. I'll, I'll try to get it as best as I can, but it'll really explain it. Once we get down to the foundry, make a mold, I'll make a couple cores, put them in there, and it, it'll explain everything, you know? So that's why I want to do this in three parts, and we'll show you the whole process, and we'll show you the finished casting. And it'll be like, oh wow, that's easy. It's not, not too hard, right? So what I'm going to do next, I got a couple pieces of plywood. And that's what I always say. All right, so yeah, I want to have a bottom piece, all right, for this. I found two pieces of plywood. We're going to use these. Uh, traditionally, too, like I would like to do is usually put the side pieces a little bit longer. The plywood would be the same thing. And this, this would be kind of a handle. I'm probably not going to be able to do that on this one because I'm just going to use these two pieces of plywood. They're like the perfect size I just found over my plywood rack. So I'm just going to use these things. I, I might be able to put some handles on the core box. It's going to my foundry. I'm going to be using them. i got to use them twice each. So I probably won't do anything. But we'll see when we get them done. All right, so next one I'm going to do is I figured what I'll do is I'll make the side rail about an inch wide. All right, that's going to be good enough. And then um, what would do, what I'm going to do is, all we got to do is basically just lay, I'm going to lay this inside configuration out on the plywood, okay? And I'm going to lay the top side out. It's going to be the bottom of my core, all right? So basically I need to lay these two, this, the width, and the length out on this plywood, that'll give me the bottom of the core, okay, where it's gonna sit, all right? And like I said, what we'll do too, is we're gonna make this core box, I'll probably make it like maybe around a 30 seconds smaller than what this is, okay? So I think this is, uh, I don't know if we made this, yeah, this is at one, it was a 16th, you know, so it's seven and five sixteenths, so we'll probably make this 30 second lighter, so seven and nine, 30 seconds. And it'll give me 64 per side. And you know, that's gonna be plenty. It, it's probably, it'll probably fit perfect once you mold it. Um, if it's got a little tiny slot, like I said, it's gonna be 64, which is like 16 thousandths of an inch. That's nothing, especially when we got an eighth inch finish all the way around this thing, all right? So I'm gonna start laying this out. I'm gonna give myself inch. Um, on one side I got a flat edge, okay, so I'm going to start this out, I'm going to put this an inch plus in, okay, alright, get mark on, I'm going to do both of them at the same time, okay, if you, if you can do that, you know, lay them both out at the same time, lay it both out at the same time, alright, so okay, those, technically, there's one edge right there, alright, so then from there, what did I say that was? Seven and five sixteenths. We're gonna go a 30 second under. I'm gonna double check myself. Seven and five sixteenths. We're gonna go a 30 second lighter so that we can uh, have a little bit of room there. All right. And I've got my panel gauge. When I get out there, I like to use the uh, panel gauge a little more. Uh, that's one of the things I've been wanting to do for years. I want to do it with you guys. I want to start making some tools with you guys. We got to make a panel gauge, a bigger one for, uh, we'll make it out of like uh, maple or something. We'll get to that project. I got, I got a few things I want to do with you guys. It's, it's just going to take me some time here. Okay. It's, uh... All right, so there's the other side for my width. All right. Get my pencil. Now, what I want to do, I want to measure this again. 
I really want to try to get this as centered as possible. If I have a chance to overlap these a little bit, I'm going to, but I really don't think I'm going to do that. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. All right, don't use pencil, but I'm not marking something right now. I'm just kind of referencing. All right, I'm going to get a center line on here. Now, a lot of center line uh, isn't really going to help me center center. This is going to help me center my core box, but I'm going to have to put another, I'm going to have to put the center line to the core box. And because center line on this, remember, it's a little off center. So I got to make sure I put that center line on here also so I can get my location of this cutout here. Okay, so from here to here, here to here is the same dimension. So I just got to make sure I'm in the center that way. So I should be good with that. It's, just, it's going to be a different center. This particular center line, like I said, I probably should have just done it in pencil all the way. Um, like I said, I want to try to get this. If I have some excess, we'll see. All right. Sometimes what you could do, if I had to put that pattern on top on, I could put my core, you know, I could take, take this pattern put that core on there make sure it's uh core print make sure it's the same but i, I have this it's going to be in the way so it's not i mean we could we could check it like this i mean that would work make sure we're where we got to be so it's just a tad under there and it looks like a tad under there too so we checked it we're good okay so we got um get this one i'll put the uh the key on after also i'm just going to build a frame around this and you know instead of instead of cutting the one side rail with the key in it we're just going to make the frame and then we're going to set that key in like i said it's just you know we're going to make two two core boxes out of these things you know down the road they might all right so we'll set this key in here later just make a little block Okay, with that key too, okay, when I do this, like I said, I want to have a little bit, bit of clearance on this, all right? So when I'm making this the core box in here, that key literally, you know, say this is the pattern, all right? I can actually have, you know, say it's six, seven, I can have the key like a quarter inch away from there, a quarter inch away from this surface. I can have a quarter inch hole in there doesn't matter i will make that pro i probably will make it a little bit quarter inch but 16th of an inch you know it's not going to matter there's no metals going to get in there all right so but here again it's what it's going to do it's going to give me a little bit more you know leeway all that key is for it's a key to make sure that i put when i place that core in there it's important where this angle is all right that's the only reason we're doing that key all right so i got these laid out on here so next what i'm going to do i got my uh seven eight stock what i'm going to do next i'm going to uh put 10 degree angle on there remember we had 10 degrees on here and then put my 10 degrees put an inch mark on there cut it to uh inch wide and that's all i got to do all right so i'm going to start sanding these things up making some pieces and i'll catch you in a minute Okay guys, I got some strips cut out here. Um, what we did, like I said, we started laying out each core box, uh, the piece of plywood. Okay, so I got these strips. What we'll do is we'll glue these on and I'm gonna go ahead and pin these on too. All right, and I got some vertical ones for the end. All right, but before I put these on, I wanna lay out this center piece in here, okay? Now, here again too we got uh two extra pieces from that one big piece that we cut this is going to make the center piece all right so i basically got my straight or straight line it's a straight line i have my center line it is straight okay so on the drawing it says that this is um four inches but we got to make it a little bit but we gotta add some some shrink to it right so it, it, a lot of times too here's the trick with um 
pattern making, this is one of the, uh, one, one way we'll be able to show you how to do things too is um, a lot of things, you, it goes backwards because of the draft angles that we have on it. And that, so these core boxes, they're going to be a mirror image, okay? They're not going to be the same. They're going to be a mirror image, okay? So we have to have the center line this way on the one and all the way to the other end on the other, okay? So basically, here's here's what I did was, all right, the center line's a skew this way on this one, and then it's a skew that way on the other one, because when we put the two cores together, it's going to go like that, okay? And it's hard, like I said, it's going to be hard to, uh, you guys to envision this, but once we get down to the foundry again, we'll make the cores and I'll, I'll show you exactly how it goes. So it's just, don't worry if you're not, you know, things aren't clicking yet, okay? So what we gotta do is, like I said, uh, it's four inches plus we did eighth of an inch draft. Then what I'm gonna do with these two is I'm gonna add draft. It's gonna make the hole bigger, make more metal go in there. So he's gonna have a little bit more than eighth of an inch to machine off. All right, which isn't going to be a big deal. Actually, it'll you know be a little plus for him. All right, so we're going to do it that way. On occasions, it does make a difference if you want to add draft or subtract draft. Um, you know, it's just what you're doing. This one, like I said, it's it's uh, we want to add a little bit. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just give uh, Keith a little extra uh, to go by here. Alright, so all you got to do, and like I said, what I'm doing, I'm just going off my layout. Alright, that's, that's the beauty of that. You know, just lay it out. Um, another way you could do this too is you can actually take a pair of dividers in, instead of a instead of your ruler and you, you can use marks with your dividers too but you know this way oh my god my dividers a pair of dividers right there but this way is just easier for me at the moment all right so i got the end part then what i'm going to do is i'm going to see where the longest point on that one angle is Okay, and then we're going to make a measurement from there. All right, now this is the part where I got to be very careful um, right and left side, okay? Because this, this does matter. I mean, it's it's you, I could do it backwards, you know, and it would really suck to send this out to Keith, and it's like, oh, that's great, but that angle's backwards, dude, you know? So it would be kind of embarrassing. Here, pretty, I'll show you another trick you can do, okay? So just take your, your ruler. You know, put your angle, and this is what this is doing. It's it's not a big deal again here, but I just have my 12-inch blade in this protractor, and it's it's not running all the way up into my layout. So, you know, you can kind of extend it with a, a smaller ruler here. So, all right, I'm getting around 14, 15 degrees, but. I got this set, so all I, I need to do, really, is just take it on here, and I gotta go minus, right? So, I'm getting clustered here again. Um, you know, a couple couple ways you can do this, too. You could, you could just make one, just plop it on the other piece, trace it out, too. All right, um, there, there's no, I mean, you can do it that way. Probably be better, especially when you're just starting out too, you know, it's that way it's a little more, more perfect, okay? All right, so I got these laid out, right and left, okay? So next what I gotta do is determine a draft. I've put three degrees on the, uh, on the pattern, uh, this, Three really doesn't matter. Matter. I could probably do three degrees again, but I noticed that it was it's three degrees is a little bit little, and it, it, there's machining all the way around it, so I could have put ten degrees, but that just kind of looks a little hokey. I'll probably put a few more degrees on this thing. 
no big deal. Like I said, it's your your thing. There's nothing that calls it out on the drawing, and it wouldn't matter because it's getting machined. So I'm gonna cut these pieces out. And we'll glue these on. Just put the frames on, and that's pretty much the core box. You know, I gotta make the little key piece in that, but I mean that that's it. It's not you know that whole you know you see this casting you know from the drawing. Let me get that up there. Right, so that that's the casting right there. All right, you're looking at that, and it's like, oh, it's got a hole in it, it's got those angles in it. You know, the pattern, just a rectangle, right? The biggest part of the, the castings is right here, and all that is is this basically a rectangular piece with an angle on the one end, you know? So, you know, it's not, not really much. So, it's kind of neat, like I was saying, yesterday I was doing a, uh, um, I was saying yesterday I was doing a, a part that had uh, 144 cores in it. You know, you should have seen it. It looked like a rat maze in there, but that's cool. You know, hopefully we'll get some more jobs where, you know, this will pertain where it's just a little bit of, um, it kind of looks basic outside for the pattern and then it's got more detailed core box to get a better casting in it. So I'm going to go cut these things out and start gluing this stuff up. And uh, then we got to finish it. Uh, a couple things, like I said yesterday, all right? So when I make this, literally I could be, you know, a quarter inch away, it doesn't matter. All right, so one of the things, another thing too, you could do with core boxes. I'm gonna probably regret doing this, but one of the things you could do with core boxes too, okay? So when I finish this pattern, all right, I gotta, I gotta finish it yet. I started doing it. Um, the edges of the core print here, all right, all these edges, I'm gonna keep them square minus, you know, there's 10 degrees on it, but I'm not gonna round these corners at all. This pattern, I'm gonna round the corners a little bit. It helps with the casting in that. The core box, the reason I'm not gonna round these is because, um, all right, so I'm gonna make my mold. All right, say this is my mold, and here's my 10 degree draft on my core print, okay? That's the whole my core print made. All right, so if I round these corners in here, when I go to set, set my core in there, if these corners are rounded here, and my corners are sharp on, my core, it's not going to go all the way down into the, the mold, okay? So basically what we do is we do it the opposite, okay? So what I'm going to do is on the pattern, which is going to make the imprint in the mold, we're going to keep those relatively square, minus the draft, okay? Then in the core box, on the bottom, I'm going to put a fillet which will make these corners round so it's going to give me a little bit of clearance down in those corners okay make it a little easier for the molders to do it um there are things i've told you before too i'm not going to do it on this going to my own foundry we're going to do uh you know only a couple this helps with hard sand a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put like a little sand trap on the core print It'll make a little indentation, and that way when, when the core goes down, especially the hard sand, if it scrapes the mold and sand goes down in the bottom of the mold, it goes down in those sand traps instead. But this is way too, that's for high production jobs and, and that. So I'm going to get with this. Um, I'm going to put it together. I'll show you when it's done, and then once it's finished, I'll be it for the core box. All right.
Okay, there you go guys. That's basically what we got. Um, what I'm going to do, like I said, I usually I like to take uh, this half of an inch, but I had those pieces of plywood, right? So I'm just going to leave those though. That, that's going to be a little bit of a handhold. So I'm just going to cut these off. Oh, I always leave my uh, lines on here and that, and then once it's on the plywood, then I'll uh, cut it off. And everything. But that's the core box. Got the other uh, mirror side of this. Right, I'm gonna finish that up. I'm gonna put some fillets in this, paint it, and this project is pretty much done, minus uh, going down to the foundry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll finish this up. You guys see me finish stuff before, paint it, and that, and then what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, it's uh, holidays next week, and probably in between work, and that. I don't know if I'll be able to get up to the foundry. But as soon as I get up to the foundry, we'll take this up there, and you know, it's two casting. We'll do the two castings for him. So, like I said, that's that. Um, got another job pretty much finished up here. I'll try to get some more. He's got another job that I'm gonna help him out on. That's just, I believe, I'm not sure if there's core box to that, but patterns. Um, that's gonna go to a steel foundry down by him. Uh, we're gonna get on that. I got a motorcycle part I gotta do for a gentleman. It's been wait, 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 wait. Um, get that done for him first. Uh, but get on uh, Keith's other job here. And I've got a couple other stuff that YouTubers have sent in. Uh, we'll get to them and uh, keep on showing them how we can do some things here. So, uh, guys, like I always ask you, please tell all uh, your friends about me, see if you can get some more subscribers, keep this channel going. I really want to you know, teach you guys a lot of stuff. We've got a long, long way to go. So, keep the subscriptions coming up. Really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next video.